Grace and peace to you, and welcome to Light, Leaven, and Salt, our video worship from Fifth Avenue Presbyterian Church. We are so glad you're here. As we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, there are a few things we'd love to share with you. First, here at Fifth Avenue Presbyterian Church, all are welcome. Young, old, gay, straight, new to the faith, lifelong member, you are welcome here. Second, if you are looking for a place to belong, a deeper faith, or ways to give back, then email membership at fapc.org. We'd love to include you in our community of faith. Third, and finally, some help with today's service. If you scroll below the video, you will find three helpful links. These links will be referenced throughout today's service, so we don't want you to miss them. The first link is to today's bulletin. The second link is for visitor sign-ins and prayer requests. And the third link is an invitation to give, allowing you to be an important part of the good work happening here at this corner of 55th and fifth. Friends, we know that even here across technological time and space, God is with us. Let us worship Holy God.
Good morning. Good morning. Please stand as you are able and join me in the call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord God in the sanctuary. sanctuary. Praise God in the vault of heaven. Praise, Praise God, God in earth and skies. Sing praises to the Lord. Shout and sing praises to God. We have witnessed God's mighty acts. We have seen the Lord's greatness. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Let everything that draws breath praise the Lord. of faith, to come before God with the truth of our lives is in itself an act of faith. For we trust that God is interested in us, interested in our thoughts, in our dreams, in our beliefs, and we trust that God's grace and mercy is intended for us. So with that confidence, let us go to God in prayer using the prayer of confession printed in your bulletin or visible on your screen. Let us pray. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name.
good news. Here, we who are broken are made whole. And here, we who are lonely are welcomed into family. And here, we who have done wrong are forgiven and sent to serve. Friends, this is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are healed, welcomed, and forgiven. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. So Easter people, there might not be a trillion flowers in the front of the sanctuary this week like there were last week, but it is still a joyful day because we are here and we are together and God is good. So let us celebrate in that joy by passing the peace with our neighbors. Friends, the peace of Jesus Christ be with you. Friends, you may be seated. At this point in the service, I want to invite all of our young Presbyterians, our kiddos, up to the front to join Miss Jamie for Children's Church. I love it. I love it. And as they gather, um, we will send them off with a blessing using the litany of parting in your bulletin. So kiddos, are you guys ready? You're going to be loud? You're going to be joyful? Yeah, I feel that energy. <clears throat> All right. Church, may God be with you there. May God be with you here. Amen. <laughs> Friends, grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ, and welcome to worship here at Fifth Avenue Presbyterian Church. Whether you are here in person or are joining us online, we are blessed by your presence. If you are new to Fifth Avenue Presbyterian Church, there are a few things you should know. First, we are a diverse crew. We don't all look alike, we don't all think alike, and yet, by the grace of God, we are united. We are knit together in our desire to follow Jesus Christ, which is an incredible gift. Secondly, you all should know that here at Fifth Avenue, we see you and we honor you. For our live stream friends, that means that we recognize that the church is wider than the walls of this room. So in celebration of that good news, we want to give a shout out to worshipers in Brazil, Spain, Dover, Ohio, and New Rochelle, New York. We see you and we share the peace of Christ with you. Please do us a favor and take a minute to click over to FAPC.org and select the I'm New tab and fill out our connection form there to let us know that you're with us. Now, for those of you who are visitors here in this room, we also want to see and celebrate you too. So if you are new among us, would you do me a favor and stand up so that we can welcome you? Friends, we are so glad you're here. To help us connect, you can find a red connect card in your pew. And you are invited to either fill that out and leave that in the offering plate later in the service or to use the QR code in your phone to fill out our visitor form online. Either way, it will be a joy to get to know you better. 
and someone on our staff will reach out this week. Now we would love to see all of you, longtime members and first time visitors after worship for coffee hour in Bonnell Hall. If you have not attended recently, then please join us. For the next month, coffee hour will be a little shorter than normal due to our special credo lecture. However, there will be food, music, and fellowship. So come, say hi, meet someone new, enjoy a cookie. It'll be better with you there. Now, a few upcoming announcements. As I just mentioned this week, we are kicking off our annual Credo Lecture Series. Credo is an annual lecture series led by the four clergy on the tenets of our Christian faith. This year, the theme is heresies, or beliefs and doctrines that the church has rejected over time. Out of curiosity, have any of you ever had an experience where you heard or saw something that you didn't believe and it helped you articulate to yourself what you do believe? I imagine many of us have had those moments. That's the power of heresies. So if you're curious, we would love to see you in Bonnell Hall after worship today. The first 15 or 20 minutes will be reserved for normal coffee hour, and then Reverend Werner Ramirez will kick off the series by talking about docetism. There will be food, and you are guaranteed to learn something new. Intrigued? Come learn. We've saved you a seat. Finally, this weekend is your last chance to register for our annual FAPC Serves event. During the pandemic, one of the things that the clergy heard people say more than anything was, I miss helping. People would say to Scott, to Werner, to Kate, I miss rolling up my sleeves. I miss getting to work. I miss volunteering. I miss hitting the streets and feeding our neighbors. I miss the service part of my faith. For the last few years, that part of our faith has been hard to get to. But now we have a chance. Christine Boyle, our outreach director, has arranged for six different service sites that are in great need of volunteers for Saturday, May 7th. If you are interested in signing up, then go to our website, click events, and scroll down to May 7th. There you will see something that says Fifth Avenue Serves, and you can find all the details you need to sign up. Friends, it's been too long. So let's take advantage of this opportunity. Let's be the church in the world. With that said, it seems we've covered our bases. We've met some new friends, you've heard some new updates, and now it's time for me to be quiet so that we can let God speak. So friends, let's still our minds and our hearts. Let us rest in the music, let us worship. Let us listen for our one true God. Thank you. 
Will you please join me in prayer? Holy Spirit, may you breathe. May we inhale your love, your mercy, and your grace. Give us comforting words. Pray all this in your name. Amen. A couple months ago, I was sitting with Pastor Scott in his office. We were doing our normal check-in type of meeting. And he leans over to me and says, I think you're really going to like the series after Easter. And sure enough, he was right. This series is called Therefore. And it comes from a quote from theologian David Johnson. And Johnson says, God loves us. No ifs come after that statement of belief. There is no maybe following this creed. But there is, for Christians, a therefore. So what is the therefore? My guess is that there are countless therefores. There's this kind of running joke amongst preachers that every preacher really only has one sermon. That no matter the passage or theme, we as preachers usually come down to one theological truth that we always proclaim from the pulpit. About a year ago, I asked Pastor Kate what her one sermon was, and she said, everyone has a calling. Now, this idea that preachers really only have one sermon, it may or may not be true. And for people that have been around me long enough, if I would ask you what my one sermon is, my guess is that you will probably say, you are loved and you're enough. I see that quite often at youth group and from the pulpit. So this week, I skimmed through many of my sermons in the past, and I asked myself, do I really only have one sermon? I've done sermons on a variety of topics and passages, and although you are loved and you're enough is not always the main point of my sermon, sure enough, it is sprinkled throughout almost every single one, whether it's a justice-related sermon, a pastoral care sermon, or a sermon based off the lectionary. The foundational truth for me that we are all made in the image of God and that our Creator loves us, it weaves throughout many, if not all, of my sermons. So yes, Pastor Scott is right. I do like this series. I like this series because each and every week we'll be reminded of the good news that you are loved. In a world that tells us that we only matter when we get into that right high school or get that right job, in a society that tells us that we're only worthy if you look a certain way, or if you're healthy, or if your body and mind are able, the truth of the gospel reminds us that those are lies. You have worth and you are loved because God created you, God cares for you, and God loves you. This is good news, especially in this Easter season. Our youth elder, Will Seitzma, in the Lenten devotional on April 12th, he wrote these words. The words of Easter ring freely in our ears. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. And on Easter, we need not burden our backs with the stresses of the future. On Easter, we realize that we are loved by God. Therefore, we are enough. There are no ifs, no buts, no maybes. There isn't anything you can do to make God love you anymore or any less. And yet, as David Johnson says, there are no ifs, but there are therefores. And friends, we will spend a lifetime figuring out all the different therefores. But for the next few weeks, we will consider a few of them. So let's lean into the good news that we are loved, and therefore, let us prepare our hearts to listen to God's holy word. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, starting at verse 19. When it was evening that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said, said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. 
If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the marks of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Don't doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. This passage begins without Thomas. The disciples are hiding. They are behind closed doors. The doors are locked and they are scared. We just read that they feared the Jewish leaders who arrested Jesus. The fear wasn't so much with Jewish people. Many of them were Jewish themselves. Their fears were with the authorities. And yet even with the doors locked, somehow Jesus is in the room with them. We've read this passage many times, so it doesn't come off as a shock to us. But I need you to imagine what it's like to be in that room. You are in a locked room. You saw Jesus killed two days before. You believe he is dead. And all of the sudden, he is in the same room with you? I would have been freaking out, and they probably were too. So Jesus says to them, peace be with you. He comes to them in peace. He gives them comfort and a place to breathe. He shows them his hands and the marks where the nails were and a side where he was pierced. He meets them where they are at and again says, peace be with you. Then the disciples begin to rejoice. Their leader was risen from the dead. He breathes into them the Holy Spirit so they can go out and share the good news with others. And there's a lot more in that section. But I only have time for one sermon, and we will talk about the Holy Spirit more on Pentecost. So let's move on to Thomas. Thomas was not there when Jesus first arrived to the disciples. Whenever we see the disciples in the Bible, we must not assume that it means just the 12 disciples. Jesus had many followers and disciples, including women. When it's the 12, it usually clarifies that it's the 12. So here... The ones that did see Jesus tell Thomas, this is what we've seen. But Thomas says, I don't believe this. I can't believe this. Unless I see the marks of the nails myself, unless I can put my finger in his side, I will not believe. And I understand his skepticism. It's hard to believe in a rumor unless you see it for yourself. And Thomas isn't alone in this. In the other Gospels, many of the other disciples don't believe either. Thomas is not the only one. And a week later, Thomas is with the disciples, and again the door is shut, and sneaky Jesus comes in again. At this point, I'm wondering how much fun Jesus is having showing up through closed doors. And I mean, he could have easily knocked, but this is maybe a lot more fun and maybe more convincing. So again, imagine the shock especially for Thomas, who did not believe earlier. He sees Jesus standing in front of him, and Jesus graciously says to him, Peace be with you. Thomas is probably confused. He didn't believe, and he may be wondering, Am I in trouble? Did I royally screw up? And Jesus gently says, Peace be with you. 
I know you said you wouldn't believe until you put your finger in the marks of my hand and your hands in my side. So here, go ahead. It may be a little gross, but go ahead and do it. Here are my hands. Don't doubt, but believe. And here's where we get the narrative of Thomas so wrong. We shame him for doubting, perhaps because we want to shame ourselves for when we doubt. Yet Jesus does not shame Thomas. Many read this passage and think Jesus is wagging his finger at Thomas. Don't doubt, but believe. But Jesus is actually giving Thomas a gift. Jesus is literally giving Thomas what he asked for. Jesus meets Thomas exactly where he's at. And Thomas said, I need to see you. I need to touch you. And Jesus says, okay, look at my hands then. Touch and see. Jesus gives Thomas this gift. And then Thomas makes a proclamation. He says, my Lord and my God. Thomas is the one in the gospel to call Jesus God. Now, many Bible scholars believe that chapter 20 is actually the end of the book of John, and that chapter 21 was added many years and additions later. I happen to agree. If this is true, compare and contrast the beginning of the book of John with here at the end. In John chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, it says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And here at the end of the book of John, Thomas proclaims that the resurrected Christ is God. Is Thomas really doubting Thomas? This passage isn't about doubting Thomas. This passage is about the risen Christ. It is about the God, the Son, the God who was there in the beginning and came to earth to proclaim good news to the poor and the oppressed. This passage is about a Jesus who meets us right where we are at and says, look at my hands. God loves us, therefore God is with us in our doubts and points us into God's truth. Jesus says in this passage, blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. And this is not a knock on the skeptic or those who doubt. This is a bold-faced acceptance of those who do doubt and yet still strive to learn about Christ and strive to follow. Blessed are those who doubt. Many fear doubt. But doubt is a normal part of faith, an essential part of faith, in my opinion. I said this in my last sermon when I preached on this passage, and I don't know if my mom remembers this, but I remember being in about elementary, maybe middle school age, and I confessed to my mom, sometimes I doubt that God even exists. And very nonchalantly, my mom says, it's okay, mijo, it happens to everyone. And I can't thank her enough for the words that she said. Because the amount of torment I could have had or shame for doubting the existence of God could have been tremendous. But every time I doubted, I had those words of my mother in my head. It's okay, mijo. It helps. It happens to everyone. And too often we have seen churches and pastors shame people for doubting God or the church. As if doubting is an enemy of spiritual growth. Yet I argue that doubting can be essential to spiritual growth when in dialogue with people and with God. And the good news is that God can handle our doubts. God is a good and gracious and understanding God. And God can take our questions, our fears, our doubts, our laments. In fact, doubt is so important that we see it throughout Scripture. Psalm 13 says, How long, O Lord? Will you forget me forever? And I want to believe that when we doubt, God asks us, what do you need? Do you need to see my hands? When I think about Thomas, Thomas doesn't doubt just out of logic. He's doubting through his grief. Thomas loved Jesus. Jesus was his leader, his mentor. Jesus helped Thomas reimagine life and hope give his life meaning and purpose. Not only was Jesus Thomas' leader, but Jesus also called him friend. Jesus washed his feet. 
And then Thomas watched him die. Can you imagine watching your mentor tortured and crucified? Overcome with grief, he doesn't believe the other disciples' experience. And I get that. In conversations with many of you, I've heard some of your doubts. Some of your doubts have come in times of grief and loss. It feels like God has left me stranded, I've heard you say. Why would God allow this to happen? She was a good person. Is God even there? All these are fair questions, especially in times of grief. And it's fair to be envious of Thomas. Thomas gets a direct answer. Thomas said, unless I see your hands and feet, I will not believe. And that's exactly what Thomas got. Jesus met him where he was at and literally showed him his hands and feet. So why can't we have that same experience when we're in grief and doubt? Jesus, come down. Show us your hands and your feet. We're begging for it. So when it feels like God isn't there, we depend on people to help us get through our darkest times. We depend on family and friends to have coffee with us when we lose a relationship. We depend on the shoulder of somebody, sometimes even a stranger, when the loved one passes away. And you know what I'm talking about, that embrace bear-like hug that you need when you can barely stand up. We depend on phone calls and text messages from friends checking in to make sure that we are okay. We depend on the compassionate nurse who helps make your bed comfortable when you're too weak to adjust your hospital bed. We depend on people. So I want you to take a second. Who was there for you in times of sorrow? Perhaps it was a life changing, devastating event, or perhaps simply a time when you were just sad. Take 10 seconds and think of their name. Who was there for you? Okay. I want you to take another 30 seconds and I want you to form a sentence in your head. Say their name and what they did for you. Their name and what they did for you. For instance, April held me the night that one of my best friends died. Take 30 seconds. I'm going to apologize to the introverts. I encourage you, if you feel comfortable, to share your sentence with your neighbor. If you're watching on live stream via Facebook or YouTube, perhaps you can write the sentence in the chat or you can send us an email. So get, go ahead, take a few seconds, share the name and that sentence with your neighbor. Throughout Lent, the choir at the end of the service would sing a benediction from a Celtic prayer that says, May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your heart to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. The spirit of the risen Christ is with us in our doubts, in times of sorrow and pain, and God uses people, regardless of faith and background, to help us journey through life. 
Jesus says, you want to see my hands? Look at the people around you. They are my hands and they are my feet. So we're going to share with our neighbor one more time. You just shared with them the name of someone in the sentence. I want you to go back to them and repeat the same sentence. But this time, I want you to say Jesus' name instead. Jesus held me the night one of my best friends died. Go ahead. Take a few seconds. Friends, God loves us. Therefore, we have room to doubt because Jesus' spirit is right there with us in the thick of it. Jesus says, look at my hands. Look at my feet. It's all around you. Will you please stand if you're able and affirm our faith together as it's printed in your bulletin or on the screen. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness amongst all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of people long silence, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. Amen. be seated. Please join with me as we lift our hearts in prayer. Christ is risen, we cry. Christ is risen indeed, we reply. What a joy to join our voices with the chorus of creation, praising you, our God of resurrection glory in person and online. Death has been defeated. You, Jesus, gather all things to yourself. Waymaker God, we celebrate and adore you. We worship full of gratitude and praise. In the aftermath of the celebration of Easter morning, marveling at the empty tune, we are aware that it is easy to lock ourselves away in fear in the upper room. We find ourselves there, grieving the state of our world on this side of eternity. Illness and war ravage lives with fear and violence. The cries of the oppressed continue to call out to you. Hear our prayers for peace, O Lord. Let your peace touch our inner being 
and be reflected in our outward ways of being. Humble and guide the leaders who would choose war over nonviolent strategies. Protect the people of Ukraine. All of creation is yours, Lord. This past week, we had an opportunity to remember Earth Day, renew our duty to be good stewards of this planet and its resources. Give us that courage to make tough decisions for the good of humanity. As the spring brings the gorgeous bloom of the flora, many will suffer seasonal allergies. And with so many big issues of the world, we also take a moment to pray for the personal struggles we all face that easily divert our attention from the bigger picture. While you love all of creation, all of humanity, you, Jesus Christ, know and call us each by name. You deeply love and welcome each one of us beautifully and wonderfully made. Meet each individual where they are and bring your peace and comfort. Bring your joy and laughter. And as you meet us, help us then to lift our eyes beyond ourselves and look to others. Be with us as we remember that you teach us the better way to love and to do unto others that it is better to give than receive. So move us as a community to serve others. Help us to engage and pray for the Fifth Avenue serves on May 7th so that all who serve and that all who are served may feel Christ's love and joy. As a transformed people, we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, all that we have and all that we are are gifts from God. From our life to our breath, our friendships and our financial resources, God has blessed us. We give not as though God, we can pay God back. We give out of gratitude. One of the ways this church uses your gifts is to support the work of our mission partner, Urban Outreach Center, located on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Through its community meals, a supermarket-style food pantry, clothing distribution program, and more, the Urban Outreach Center provides the connection to basic resources to the most vulnerable populations of New York City. This is just one of the ways that your gifts help sustain Fifth Avenue Presbyterian Church. During the offertory anthem, ushers will be passing the plates. We have also provided other ways for you to give. If you look in front of you, you will find a give QR code, looks like this. And by using it with your phone's camera, you can securely make a donation from the convenience of your smartphone. And live streaming friends, you'll see this code on your screen. Feel free to pull out your phones now. Thank you for supporting the many ministries of this church. And thank you so much for your generosity.
See? 
Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. You are abundant, and out of your mercy, you have given us so much. We give you this offering today. With it, we worship you and give our whole selves to you. Please now take it and use it for your kingdom and your glory. Extend and multiply its reach and influence, we pray. May it be a great blessing to many. And we ask all of this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining us in worship today. As we said at the top of the hour, you are always welcome here. If you are seeking ways to dig deeper or to get involved, reach out. We have devotionals, podcasts, service opportunities, small groups, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. We'd love to include you. Friends, go in peace. Know that you are loved and come back soon. Family and faith, may the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your heart to love. And may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. You are deeply loved. Amen. Thank you.